Strange lights and booms and cracks and even earthquakes. Lake Superior, Michigan quakes. The Kiwini, Kiwini Fault and the Mid-Continental Rift. We've been paying a lot of attention on what's happening on the West Coast, New Madrid, even some events on the East Coast. But we have earthquakes around Lake Superior at the area of the Mid-Continental Rift. I am not a geologist. I don't know too much about what's happening in the area of the Great Lakes. But one of my viewers, Kevin Lancour, has been directing me into what's happening in his area in Wisconsin. And he says that uh, he has an app from the local weather showing earthquakes that he's always looking at. And uh, he seems to, uh, he directed me to, and I'll leave a link below for you. The We'll look at it together. Um, a live webcam showing us the Bayshore Park boat launch and he's directing us to see the cracks that are on there and also I'll show you what he directed me concerning a video of the area with cracks uplift the pavement is totally destroyed um, and he believes that it could be earthquakes now USGS is not showing us but the Canadian Geological Survey does show a quake on Lake Superior on the on, on the side of Ontario, I believe. Unfortunately, USGS just does not show what's happening in Minnesota. It doesn't show anything above what's happening above the U.S. border. But we have an earthquake recently, December first, on the side of Ontario, and we'll look at what's happening here. You see the uh, faults, the Appalachians and the uh, falls going into Lake Superior. Let's take a look at that together so you could have a better view. Okay, this is the area of the, the cracked, uh, you can, okay. This is Green Bay Crime Reports Police Fire and Rescue, uh, December 4th. Bayshore Park, this is the, what I'll show you later. Sorry about that. Link so you can see it. Okay. The Bayshore Park, this is it basically. That's the live, uh, the live camera of it. And um, okay, so this is what Kevin Lancourt, thank you very much, Kevin, for sending us these things. And you can uh, see them yourself. I'll leave links below. But um, let's go to the uh, Sizemo Berkeley. You see that this is it. This is the region here we're talking about uh, concerning the loud booms and uh, things like weird lights, flashing of lights, strange lights coming from the ground. And we've even seen the cracked up areas of uh, the boat launch, the bay shore, right there. So, do we have any earthquakes? Well, what we've already said many times before, USGS just basically stops here at the US-Canada border. But we do have the Canadian Geological Survey. It's not as good, but this is it. We've had a big one here today. Okay, Northwest Territories right there. Uh, Yukon Territories. Okay, Dawson. And this one here. This is it. Actually, I don't know where that is. Is that on the US border? Uh, that's on Ontario. That's Ontario. Okay. 18 kilometers depth, 2 magnitude on December 1st. So that's, as you can see, right on Lake Superior. Okay, right there. 
This is the area that our friend Kevin is telling us about, right there. And what do we have there? Well, that's it right there. That's the area right there. Amazing. Mid-continental rift at the Kewinan Rift, Lake Superior occupies the apex of the rift. The Mid-Continental Rift, a 1,200-mile-long geological rift, of course, the rift, as we know, is linear zone lithosphere being pulled apart and is an example of extensional tectonics. Well, we already have the New Madrid Seismic Zone, which is a rift valley, the real foot rift zone, and we have another area here, the Mid-Continental Rift, as well, being pulled apart. In the center of the North American continent, and south central part of North American plate. South central, right here. Okay, right here. It formed when the continent's core, the North American craton, began to split apart during the Mesoproterozoic era of the Precambrian about 1.1 billion years ago. The rift failed, leaving behind the thick layers of igneous rock exposed in its northern reaches but buried beneath sedimentary formations, most of its western and eastern arms. These arms meet at Lake Superior. Okay? That's where it contains the Rift Valley. That's what may, that's, maybe that's from Africa, I don't know. Uh, the lake's north shore and Ontario, Minnesota defines the arc, the northern arc of the rift. From the lake, the rift's eastern arm tends trends south to lower Michigan, okay, and uh, possibly into Indiana, Ohio, Kentucky, Tennessee, Alabama. Do you know what's there? That's the area of the New Madrid seismic zone. The western arms run from Lake Superior southwest through portions of Wisconsin, Minnesota, Iowa, Nebraska, and North East. Okay, so basically, that's, it, it's basically part of the uh, New Madrid seismic zone. There it is right there, the rocks exposed to the buffs. That's what the uh, section looks like, the rift today. Near that lake, rocks produced by the rift can be found on the surface of uh, Ile Royale and Kewina Peninsula, the upper peninsula of Michigan. Northwest Wisconsin, North Shore, Superior, Minnesota, Ontario. Okay, interstate as far south as Interstate Park near St. Paul, Minnesota. The rift is buried beneath more sedimentary rocks. Okay. A slightly older but possibly related geologic feature is Mackenzie Large Igneous Province in Canada. Okay. So, Sleeping Giant, Ontario. Amazing. Mafic Sills, Eroded Volcanic Strata, Ile Royale. Volcanic strata. Sequoia River, Interstate Park. Nice pictures. Okay, and then we'll go. We'll go to the um, Kawina Fault, the Reverse Fault. Look at that picture. Look at that. My goodness, a fracture or a discontinuity in the volume of rock across which there has been significant displacement, as a result of rock mass movement and large faults within the Earth's crust result from the action of plate tectonic forces. The Kawina Peninsula of the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. The fault is a boundary between the mid-continental rift, we saw that before, and adjacent Precambrian terrain. Okay. The peninsula itself is the southeastern side of the large syncline beneath Lake Superior. Syncline is underneath there, you can see that there in the middle. It's a fold with younger layers closer to the center of the structure. It's a, syn it's a syncline beneath Lake Superior. Okay, there's Lake Superior, the dark blue up there. The northwestern sides of Ile Royale. Is an island of the Great Lakes located in the northwest of Lake Superior. 
in Laurentia, it's part of the U.S. state of Michigan, and the island is 450 surrounding smaller islands and waters make up Ile Royale National Park. So the fault is more than 100 miles or 160 kilometers long, tracing northwesterly path. The fault is most likely younger than the uh, other some other formations. Seismic events in 1906 claimed to be an earthquake has been attributed to rock burst, as the area has been significantly mined. Okay. So this is it right here, and uh, we've had the earthquake recently of two magnitude right on the coast, right on the uh, uh, northwest shore of that. So yeah, we do have earthquakes. I don't know about the lights uh, coming from the ground and the booms. Um, we'll have to look into volcanic, uh, I don't know if there were volcan volcanoes in that area, something happening there but it is a rift area so it could be that something is breaking there as well we did find volcanoes here on in maine maine has five volcanoes we did find that we had the uh recent earthquakes that we had here rhode island and plymouth massachusetts we have this area here that's underground seamount of 30 volcanoes we even have volcanoes up in montreal from that chain and I used to live in Montreal, so I was shocked to hear that because I was going up to uh, Mont Royal so many times, and that's, <laughs> that's a volcano. And Beaver Lake is most probably the crater. Who knows? But um, I shouldn't laugh about that. Um, so we'll see what's happening there as well. But that is a part of the mid continental rift going all the way down to the New Madrid seismic zone. So, I don't know. So since that, since that uh, fault goes all the way down to New Madrid, to New Madrid, uh, on this section here, we have this section here, we have this section here, uh, and since we have all this activity, what can I tell you? We'll just have to wait and see. Uh, this is news. This is the first time I looked at this because I usually look at this map. I don't look at the Canadian quakes too much. But um, since our friend Kevin Lancour, uh, who is around there, was able to point this out and direct us to um, these things, I'll leave links below for you, of course. Uh, okay, and, and the video as well. The video having to do with what we saw from um, the uh, Green Bay Crime Reports Police Fire and Rescue. So I'll leave links below for you for that. Thank you, Kevin, again for your directions and your information. I think you can see the mid-continental rift area uh, here around the Great Lakes much better on this map. As you can see, it touches, it's that grayish uh, oval ivory colored thing um, around two o'clock in the center of the map and that goes over the Great Lakes coming down to that light blue line that's the crack that we have going from Vancouver Island through uh, from the west coast through Seattle through Yellowstone it's 2,200 miles and it meets at the second large crack that's the New Madrid Real Foot Rift Zone going all the way from New Madrid, Missouri, all the way up to St. Lawrence Seaway in Canada, as you can see. So that's the Real Foot Rift Zone of the New Madrid Seismic Zone, which geologists say should be called New Madrid, New Madrid Rift Zone. And we just talked about the Mid-Continental Rift today, having to do with Lake Superior and also the recent cracks and quakes in that area as well.
If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media, and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.